Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to spill some tea about my daughter. She's 19 now. But when she was 12 years old, she got into a bit of trouble, simping over a boy in school. <laughs> and like most frazzled mums, I went berserk. No, no TV for a week. No, you cannot see your friends. You stay in your room so you can have a good long think about what you've done. It backfired because she had a pretty okay time in her room, undisturbed. So I changed my methods. I confiscated her phone, disconnected the Wi-Fi, and unplugged the computer. It was as though I had cut off the supply of oxygen to her lungs. Now, if this sounds like something that happened to you when you were a teenager, well, I'm relieved to know that I'm not the only parent who did it. And I realize now that it may not have been the best form of discipline. But as a mother of not one, not two, but three Gen Zs, I was unprepared. I didn't know what to expect having kids who were raised on the internet. Kids who come from a generation with technology at their fingertips. Kids who cannot imagine a life without Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And they don't understand that I come from the generation that borrows sugar from the neighbors, not their Wi-Fi password. Not that we did any of that, by the way. But you know what? I'm getting better now. I listen more, and we engage in conversation as much as we can so that we can understand each other and narrow the gap between my generation and their generation. So can I just see how many of you here are born after the year 1996? Hi, Gen Zs. I come in peace. <laughs> <laughs> what about Gen Ys? Hey, millennials. <laughs> what about my generation? Those born from, yes, be proud, Gen X. <laughs> Had I been born five years before the year I was born, I would be a baby boomer. And I would be known by the new generation as a boomer, which is not, by the way, an affectionate term of endearment. So, What's with all these generational labels? Why do they exist? Well, it's part of a demographic study that examines economic and social trends for marketing and advertising purposes. These labels define us with certain characteristics and behaviors that say that if you're born in a particular generation, then you're probably technologically savvy or that you're a digital native, or that you're obsessed with social media. But it could also label you as stubborn, or self-absorbed, or resistant to change. And many other generalized statements. This is just a short list. And I'm sure you've heard these statements before. Millennials, they're pampered, they're self-absorbed, and they think they're entitled. Boomers, so set in their ways, can't keep up with the times, just don't understand technology. Now, with, with negative statements that generalize us all, think of the potential harm this can bring to companies, careers, and even family relationships. What we've done is reduce real people to mere statistics. And there are images and memes online, though they're funny, they further emphasize these generational differences. Is there really a generational war between baby boomers, Gen X, Gen Y, and Gen Zs? So I started thinking deeper about the generations X, Y, and Z at work. One young Gen Z executive shared with me his intention to resign 
from his current organization. When asked what his reasons were for wanting to quit, he said that his efforts are being overlooked by his superiors. But what was interesting about this conversation was when I found out that he had only been working there for eight months. And another young Gen Z worker I spoke to recently is very happy at her workplace, been there for a few years. So what made her stay? She said that the environment she works in encourages her to express herself freely. Her ideas and suggestions are being heard and she's provided with upskilling opportunities at her workplace. Having coached and worked with a number of young generation as well as older generation working professionals in my line of work, I've gained some insights into their aspirations and their struggles at work. And these are useful points, useful information for employers, and human resource management who want to recruit, retain, and train their young employees. Why is this important? Because the new generation is the biggest and latest wave of young professionals entering the workforce now. So, Gen Zs, they're ready. They're ready to work hard and work smart. They want to be heard and acknowledged. They want to be noticed and judged by their merit. They want to engage in open communication. And they need to know from their employers that they have their best interest at heart, such as providing them with work-life balance and skill development and advancement opportunities Gen Zs also appreciate an environment with technologically up-to-date tools, apps, and facilities for improved communication and productivity. Gen Zs would also thrive if given opportunities to be part of a bigger effort, a movement or change that comes with it real meaning and purpose. So it comes as no surprise that someone like Greta Thunberg is a great example of a Gen Z cohort who is set on making changes in this world. Gen Zs are also the generation with the entrepreneurial spirit. I remember kids as young as seven or eight successfully making and selling loom bands and slime online and in schools. Maybe you were one of them. <laughs> and if you look up teen entrepreneurs online, you'll find a long list of young, successful entrepreneurs who have made it be below the age of 17. If young workers are not happy or unfulfilled at your company, they might step out and create something on their own and compete with other companies, maybe even yours. So if you are a company or an organization that can provide rewarding and positive work experience with a technologically conducive environment and an attractive compensation plan, then you are in the best position to welcome and retain your young employee. But Gen Zs have to also take into consideration a few things before entering the workforce. Employers sometimes look at Gen Zs with some concerns. They worry that Gen Z's dependence on technology may have weakened their ability to to maintain strong interpersonal relationships and build good people skills. They question their sense of loyalty and patience due to Gen Z's cancel culture. And they're concerned about Gen Z's short attention spans and uh, their need for quick gratification. 
Some of the biggest challenges that employers face with Gen Zs are related to work ethics, discipline, and resilience. So what are we to do? How do we bridge the generation gap? How do we lead each other to find a mutual understanding? The answer may lie in that word itself, lead. Listen and learn, engage in conversation, appreciate and acknowledge, and do make a difference. As a public speaking and communications coach, I often share that it is just as important to listen as it is to speak. All generations need to sometimes step back and not bombard each other with the idea and notion that we know more than you. Sometimes what's needed is to just listen and then engage in a two-way conversation. Gen Zs often find answers to their question from Google. Consider now finding your answers from the older generation, from top leaders to the less fortunate. They all have their stories with valuable nuggets that you can learn from. The older generation can also learn quite a lot from the new generation. I know I have. Their innovative energy and, and courage sometimes cannot be ignored. All generations need to appreciate and acknowledge that significant events in our lifetime may have influenced our behavior, our spending habits, and priorities. Because historical circumstances can be very influential. Take a look at some of the pivotal events in our lifetime, in, in each generation. The world has gone through independence and freedom. It's gone through chaos and crisis, discrimination and disease, technological and digital evolution. Think how these events may have shaped or shaken our economy, our personal financial standing, our actions and reactions, as well as our value and belief systems. And Gen Zs, the true digital natives, you've arrived at a time when the world was made more aware about global, sorry, global warming and the impact on the environment. You witnessed the election of Barack Obama, the first person of color elected as president of the United States. And here in this country, we also witnessed changes in our political landscape never seen before since our independence. Never before in history was there a generation more woke than the Gen Z generation, participating in dialogues related to politics, conservation, sustainability, gender issues, diversity, climate issues, all while going through a pandemic and a global lockdown. do make a difference. Companies need to find creative ways to shift their organization to make a difference in order to attract and retain the young employees. And young employees also need to make a difference and lead by changing and altering the narrative from me, me, me to we. So, the trick is, I think, or the key is to find mentors in each other so that we can learn from each generation and add value to each other's lives. My three children, my three Gen Z children, are my mentors, just as I am theirs. My eldest daughter, Nadia, she's 19, she taught me to step out of my comfort zone and embrace tools like AI and social media. My youngest son, he's 13. He taught me cool words I didn't know before, words like Googleplex 
and NPC, <laughs> non-player character. And he's been trying very hard to make me understand non-fungible tokens, which I still cannot understand. <laughs> and my, young, my other daughter, Sophia, she's my greatest critic and my confidant. And she taught me how to communicate with Gen Zs and how to relate to their lingo. So if I wanted to say, this TEDx talk is amazing, Gen Zs would say, this TEDx talk slaps, yas, hashtag slay, hashtag go boss. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Thank you.